the, the first uh, one was Zell Scotia Market, no longer in operation, but so it's not an advertisement, but it was uh, the place where I would have first met the Jewish community. It was my dad and my uncle Bible and uh, our uncle Jack uh, Woodrow's uh, uh, store. And then from there, I would say the next one I remember is Beth Israel Synagogue, uh, Toma Torah, and uh, the Beth Shalom Synagogue. And the, uh, the uh, Toma Torah was the center of, uh, of where we all went to school. Plus it was, uh, I would go to concerts where my older siblings were in them. Beth, Beth Israel Shul on 119th Street. Uh, Tom Torah, both for going to school and going to junior congregation Saturday mornings. Uh, you know, those were, all the places that I associated with being being Jewish in Edmonton, and uh, the Talmud Torah on 133rd Street, uh, 106th Avenue was also a place when uh, I went there. There was a grade seven for one year that I was there, and then after I went to Westminster Junior High School during the day, but three days a week, uh, we went to uh, evening school at Talmud Torah till grade nine as well. Uh, another place, I don't think when I was very young, the Hebra Kedisha and the Jewish Cemetery were also uh, Jewish institutions, you know, purely Jewish institutions uh, that, that I remember. And later on, the, uh, you know, as you age, the, uh, the Hebra Kedisha and the uh, Jewish Cemetery are places you, uh, you visit it more and more uh, people you know get older pass on. I just have a couple of memories of, you know, two two things. It would be on uh, Shabbat afternoon. My dad was showing a Shabbat, but uh, in the summer, he would always regularly take me for a walk to the fountain on 133rd Street. And uh, I, I still associate that, associate that with Shabbat afternoon or later in the evening when the days were very long. Uh, that fountain is still today, although refurbished. And the other thing I do remember is uh, junior congregation. Uh, the Kiddush, uh, since we were kids, was not alcoholic. So, but there was always these great little ice cream Dixie cups and sandwich cookies. And uh, that sticks in my memory. And one final thing that Barry brought up the Hever Kadisha. I remember being quite young, but being at Shul during the week for Min Hamarav, and there was a meeting, a Hever Kadisha meeting. And since we are Kohanim, we're not allowed to be part of the Hever Kadisha. But uh, a couple of the Jewish, uh, of the uh, people that were involved in the Hever Kadisha wanted to hire, my, not hire, but have my dad act as an arbitrator, that there was a, a disagreement over that the Hebra Kadisha was not being kept in neat and good order. And uh, my father refused to be involved with that. But I still remember that quite well. I forgot to mention about the Bes Shalom. It was also, uh, although I didn't realize it at the time, it was also sort of the Jewish community center. I think it was kind of uh, designed. I remember seeing some plans, but we also had uh, our uh, AZA, uh, BBYO meetings always took place there. And uh, so it was a, a very central location for all of uh, Jewish life in Edmonton. And the thing was that uh, the institutions that we've mentioned were really the the only institutions and the only dichotomy would have been between the rules at the Beth Shalom, which was uh, conservative and at the, um, at the Beth Israel. And there wasn't a very big difference between it. Uh, one was you sat together 
uh, with uh, everybody and in the Beth Israel, uh, the women's and men's seating were separate, but they were like a block apart. And there was a free exchange of kids on high holidays. Uh, like I knew both buildings equally well. Uh, so I would say it was more of a unified community with the Toma Torah being sort of the most central where almost every child went. Uh, we had, I think at one time, 360 kids and every, uh, every grade had, uh, had at least two classes of, uh, of children. Uh, so there was, uh, uh, it was a very, very vibrant institution uh, as well, like the Beth Israel uh, had, uh, they had Oneg Shabbat on Friday nights. I remember reading the bulletin and seeing who was the convener of it. I don't, didn't, never knew what a convener was. Uh, but uh, we also had this unique look at the Jewish community because uh, we all worked at the butcher shop at one time or another uh, as uh, uh, you know, go boys, uh, delivery and, and just helping out. So uh, I had uh, an encyclopedic knowledge of every customer's uh, address uh, that I can still mention, even though nobody lives at any of those places anymore. But as Danny mentioned, the Jewish Community Center at the Talmud Torah was really the gym and they had a lounge there. And uh, that was it. But I remember it being a hub of activity, especially Sunday. There was always something going on. And with respect to Danny's encyclopedic memory of all the customers, if Barry or I are with him in a car driving in the city, he will point out a house. And it might not even be the same house because it could have been torn down. But he'd say, who'd lived here? And we have to answer, and usually we get it right. The first butcher shop, there were two butcher shops that went under the name Zal's Kosher. The first one was on 124th Street, about 109th Avenue. It was there from, I, I would say, 1955 to maybe 1958. And then they built a building on... Uh, 107th Avenue, between 107th and 108th on the east side. I don't have the exact address. I could. It's now Woodshed Burgers is where, where it is. And that lasted from uh, 1958 to about 1981, 82. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then there was actually... It wasn't Zal's, they, everyone retired. And uh, about five years later, they decided to come out of retirement with Nate Siegel and his wife, Lil. And they opened up a butcher shop called Edmonton Kosher Meats and Deli. It was with my uncle Fievel, my father, uh, Noah Zalmanowitz, and Nate Siegel, and his wife, Lil, on 127th Street, and again, between 109th and 110th Avenue. Uh, the building is still there. And they operated that in their, you know, they were all getting late 70s, maybe even to their 80s, operated it for five or six years. It was quite a, a funny place, quite a social place. It was certainly served a need in the community. Service was very slow. People out of here. <laughs> It was funny being there. We were older by, by then, we were adults. Being there and watching someone who was new who came in who thought this was a regular commercial enterprise and couldn't believe how slow it was. And I used to enjoy watching, uh, you know, watching them sort of adjust that this was a hobby kosher butcher shop. Uh, um, I wouldn't say so. it was a real kosher butcher shop, but it was sort of operated as a, kind of a hobby for uh, uh, senior citizens. And it was quite a social place for people who like to come in. I mean, people came in just to talk, not to buy anything. Uh, if I could add to the butcher shop, the Edmonton Kosher Deli that 
uh, gave rise, which was, as Barry's saying, they, it was a slow motion butcher shop. Um, my friend, Dr. Jonathan Tankle, who's from South Africa, when he moved here, he would buy, you know, huge orders of frozen meat because he was working in Valley View and he would be ready to pick up one of the boxes. And my uncle Fievel, as Barry said, who was in his late seventies or early eighties, would not allow Jonathan to carry it out to the car. He would have to carry it out to the car because it was always service first at Edmund Kosher Deli. Well, the old Beth Israel synagogue uh, on her 19th street is still there, but it's somebody's bachelor pad. Uh, it's on 119th street and 102nd Avenue. And it was purchased uh, by someone who converted it into a, you know, quite an elaborate residence. And uh, uh, in Edmonton, I live in that area now and in a, in a condominium on Jasper Avenue, 123rd street. And I walk to work and I walk past it every day and it always evokes memories. Um, that whole area I associated with, uh, you know, being Jewish in Edmonton, because that's where the synagogue was. Uh, so it still means something. Beth Israel, Beth Shalom is also, uh, uh, my wife and I were members there as well as the Beth Israel, because she preferred it. And we actually got married in Beth Shalom. And uh, at least some of my children had their, uh, uh, bat mitzvah. One of them had their bat mitzvah at Beth Shalom. So, yeah, both of them are still very meaningful places, and uh, I always associate uh, them with uh, Jewish Edmonton. There was Alberta Bakery that was owned by the Schechter family uh, on 95th Street, and uh, it had a retail in the front and then the bakery in the back. And my dad uh, and uncles actually sold Alberta Bakery bread. They made challahs and uh, it was, uh, I don't know, it, 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 there wasn't a widespread, you know, uh, kosher certification with markings on all of the packages, but that was a place where you went for your, your bread. And um, uh, then down the street about 10 blocks was the first Beth Israel Synagogue, and it still stands at, on 95th Street at the top of Cameron Avenue. Uh, it's a lovely location. It's been, it was sold and it's been a church uh, for, for many, many years. It's uh, now clad in uh, maybe uh, aluminum or plastic siding, but it, underneath it, I remember my dad would drive by and he'd show me that on the corners there were these round balls uh, as an architectural feature with stars of David on them. And that really, uh, really made me wonder about it. And as, I, uh, as I've worked downtown for my entire adult life, uh, it has a plaque on it, an historical plaque. Uh, so I can see what it looked like, which reminds me but uh, my parents got married in that building. We have a very short uh, uh, film of them on the uh, getting married inside and of them on the balcony uh, for the reception. The, uh, the first Beth Israel synagogue, which has the plaque on it, it is now for pinpoint location is it is owned by the uh, Roman Catholic Archdiocese. It's called St. Boniface Church. It's a it's actually a German speaking Catholic community and the um, Jewish I was on involved with the Jewish Archives and Historical Society of Edmonton Northern Alberta the project of trying to acquire that building uh, when the archdiocese no longer needed it for a church which at the time they thought would be pretty soon uh, and uh, we actually uh, had a feasibility study done uh, uh, you know, the, uh, an architect with experience in historical restoration and an engineering firm did it. And the brick is still underneath the vinyl siding. The archdiocese said, yes, they would certainly, uh, you know, want to see the building restored at the point in time, um, you know, that they no longer need it. 
but I, it's not really an active project anymore. We followed up every year and uh, nobody, uh, I don't think the uh, Jewish Archive Society, I don't think anybody actively pursues it. Uh, but I, I would be, I used to send a letter once a year uh, indicating that we're still interested in acquiring it and please, uh, you know, it's a historic resource, even though it's not designated, uh, that uh, we would want to be able to restore it. Uh, so uh, who knows if that will ever happen. Danny, I think, or Barry mentioned on that the community was not as, it was a very unified community. And that was also seen through Kashrut, that the Jewish Federation or whatever it was called, the Jewish Community Council at that time, had a actual Kashrut committee and Kashrut was just, it was a given that the Orthodox rabbi would be the, you know, the supervisor of the mashgiach for what, uh, for the, the bakery and the butcher shop. And as I say, there were no EK stamps. There was nothing as Danny said, but uh, the Federation made it a priority to have a Kashrut committee. And Paula, I think your father was chair of that committee along with uh, Dr. Joe Bugist and uh, uh, Justice uh, Ron Berger at times. And uh, they ensured that there was a proper kashrut in the committee there, uh, a kashrut in the community. There was, made sure there was meat, there was uh, baked goods. And uh, which I, I think goes to Danny's point that we were much more unified at that point uh, such an animal no longer exists uh, in, in, in the, with the Jewish Federation. Another just place that I do remember, and I think Danny and Barry will remember, because again, Saturday nights in the winter, on Motzei Shabbat, my father would take me to Ruben's Grocery. That's, uh, it was Flory Axler's mother and father. Uh, Farrell Shadlin's, Shadlin's grandparents. They owned a, a, a little convenience grocery store on about 95th Street and 115th Avenue, somewhere in there. But uh, they were, you know, uh, both regular customers of the butcher shop. So we would do re reciprocity and Saturday night go there and pick up a few groceries. And uh, I think that was also known as a, a bit of a Jewish landmark, uh, the Rubens Grocery. Uh, there's a funny story about the Rubens Grocery Store because it was a rough area of the city eventually. And I recall reading in the newspaper uh, one day, I probably would have been maybe in university by that time, early university. And it was, uh, there had been an attempted robbery that was not successful. And the story went, a robber came in and wanted, uh, asked for money and Mr. Rubin, David Rubin was his name. Uh, he had a big knife because he also sold meat. Where kept, so he comes, he picks up the, the knife and chases the robber away. And the uh, newspaper reporter uh, said, gee, that was fairly impressive. That was risky to do that. And he said, well, <laughs> he said, the one thing, the robbery would have worked, but there was one thing that the robber failed to take into account that in 1932, I was a military policeman in the <laughs> Polish army. We, we, we haven't mentioned the newer buildings in the community. And I think that that's, uh, that speaks to something because uh, all three of us would have uh, contributed substantially with both time and money into the building of the uh, Beth Israel Synagogue in Wolf Willow and the new Talmud Torah, which is on uh, about 173rd Street uh, and about uh, 68th Avenue. Uh, and our kids all went to the new Talmud Torah. Uh, um, they, uh, they, the Talmud Torah, the new Talmud Torah was central in terms of, uh, of uh, activities surrounding the Talmud Torah, but not the community at large anymore. Uh, and uh, the neighborhood that it's in is not as, uh, as, uh, as, as I would say, not as nice in terms of residential 
surroundings, uh, but uh, we, we never mentioned them, even though those were the ones that we would have contributed to the most. And uh, those were the ones that our children would have in their memories uh, for that. The Beth Israel Synagogue remained important uh, because that was the continuity that we had. We were, uh, I think we were honored as brothers uh, for something to do with the Beth Israel. And there is, uh, I'm going to just bring a picture uh, of the three of us that they took for the brochure because looking back on it, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's interesting. So a, a rabbi, while well, Danny's doing that, a rabbi that, uh... Barry mentioned he went to grade seven at the Tomatora on 133rd Street. I think it was the first grade seven class. Two years later, it wasn't in operation for me, but for my children, there was a junior high school that, uh, uh, that was, uh, the school Tomatora went all the way to grade nine as a day school. And that, uh, that lasted for quite a number of years. And I think in the past few years, the classes have gotten so that they've had to split classes and, and uh, it's not that there's fewer Jewish people in the city, uh, it's that there is uh, more choice, more diversity, and I think less of a connectivity to you know, one central institution. Uh, there was also the Jewish Community Center on 156th Street that was very important in my children's life and there was a swimming pool there and that's where the Cub Scouts met and uh, the youth groups and uh, that's where the uh, Beth Ora Reform Synagogue had its premises. So it was a community hub for a variety of reasons. Uh, it, uh, it didn't, it, it wasn't sustained for, it was sustained for about uh, uh, 25 years, maybe from inception. To, uh, to it and also it was just a beautiful piece of property with wonderful views, uh, not unlike your virtual view behind you, Paula, uh, but just the whole uh, river valley, these floor to ceiling windows. Uh, so it was there, but it's, uh, it was then decided to have a, a sort of a non-communal Jewish Community Center, uh, where all of the offices were centrally. The only truly uh, universal organization is the Hevra Kadisha. Uh, and, and when you talk about importance of things, I will, if I'm driving anywhere near there, I will always make it a point to drive by the cemetery, even though I don't stop. And, go there, but that is also a real anchor for me. My, our parents are both there and, and uh, as our, our uh, maternal grandparents are buried there. Uh, we have not seen the graves because we're Kohanim and we don't go in except for the funeral of the immediate family, but it has been uh, an interesting observation watching the, the graveyard fill up, you know, over uh, our lives, we're all in our 60s, uh, and just to see that, and we know that there is a new uh, uh, piece of land for cemetery and that monies are being raised right now. There was an add-on to the United Jewish Appeal, but, uh, you know, it makes me wonder. Uh, I always thought that I would be buried at the cemetery here at Marie's. And, uh, and a good Jewish community in terms of providing us with education and, uh, and uh, feelings of social and Jewish responsibility as well as responsibility to the greater community. Uh, I wish I could turn back the clock and, and have 
a similar life for for uh, next generations. But that's that's uh, just the uh, the musings of a a recent senior citizen. I I have a strong identity to the past community, but I just do feel that the community that exists today, and maybe it's always you look back at the good old days. Uh, I see quite a difference in the community, but uh, yeah, very fond memories. And uh, I do have fond memories growing up with my brothers and getting beaten up on a regular basis too. I'm the baby, so I just thought I'd throw that in. Okay.